So before connecting your EC2 instances, we need to hold on to that thought for some time and we need to talk about a very important topic that is called routing. The definition tells us is that a routing table contains a set of rules called routes that are used to determine what network or where network traffic from your subnet or gateway is directed. So the most important thing that you need to keep an eye on is where network traffic from your subnet or gateway is directed. Remember this point very carefully, where network traffic from your subnets or gateway is directed. So this can go both ways, like what if the request is coming from an external entity or network, or if a request is going out from your subnet as well. So when you create a VPC, an implicit router gets attached to your VPC. And what does a router do? It helps with the routing, of course, and other things like NAT and traffic management. And it also helps us with connecting to other networks and their other purposes as well. So let's suppose you own a logistic service and you have segregated the pin codes of the places of delivery and the delivery executives who will be assigned with the consignment. So let's suppose you get a package delivery for Mumbai. You check the inventory to find out who is the executive that can take this request up and then you assign the task to that person. How do we know that information exists? We have an idea of this because we have a rule set that tells us if a request comes from a specific area, then who is the one who should handle it or who is the one that should handle it. And that is what the route table does. And each entry or what we call is route in a table specifies a destination and a target. As I told you just now that a VPC has an implicit router and you use route tables to control where network traffic is directed. So let's suppose you want your application on EC2 to connect to the internet and get access to services on AWS as well. For this, you need the help of the internet gateway. Here, you need to be very clear that each subnet that you have in your VPC must be associated with a route table, which controls the routing for the subnet. But you might also want to assign your subnet to a different route table that you might have customized for your requirement. For this, we can assign our subnets to custom route tables as well and make use of them. Else, it will be assigned to the main route table by default. As you can attach subnets to only a single route table at once. But the good thing is that you can assign multiple subnets to a single route table. So that's a good part. And if we see the visual here, we want our EC2 instance to connect to the internet. That is the public internet. And for that, we need our instance to be on the public subnet. And what makes a subnet public subnet? Yes, if that subnet is assigned to a internet gateway. So the top row tells us that you have your subnet, which is now connected to the internet gate with the ID IGW124532254545. And this is the subnet that we have, and this is now connected to the internet gateway. And here, the way we read the route tables is very important. So if you see the destination of the route, that is basically your 0.0.0.0 slash .0, .0, 0, which actually spans across all the IPv4 addresses. And the target is your internet gateway that's attached to your VPC. And if I want my EC2 instance to access google.com, we know that google.com is having its public IP mapped to the DNS. For example, it could be 43.22.12.11, which actually falls in the range of 0, .0, .0, .0, .0, 0.0.0.0 slash 0. That's a public IP address. So the IP of google.com becomes my destination IP. Now, when this request is sent out, the routing table checks the rule set and tells the gateway that there is a destination IP that is in the range of the public IPv4 address and you are the one who is meant to handle it because your name is mapped as a target. So that is the reason we say the route table has a route to the internet that is 0.0.0.0 slash .0, 0, .0, 0, 0 through the internet gateway. So the route table is here and this has a mapping for the internet gateway which actually has the connection to the internet. And for the private subnet, you will have an entry for your CIDR 
of your subnet as your destination and the target being local which means the instance communication between private instances should route through the same vpc so this is the one so this is the cider block for your vpc and there's the local as a target and when you create a subnet this route is added by default to all route tables if you have more than one cider block then you will have an entry for each of the cider blocks in your route table that is your local route and for the ipv6 addresses as they are not included by default as a part of the ipv4 list you must create a route with the destination cider of colon colon slash zero for all the ipv6 addresses so this is for the ipv6 for the main route table there are a few important points that we need to cover so let's talk about them so let's talk about this portion now so as we have already spoken about this we when we create a vpc it automatically has a main route table that gets associated with it and if you have seen the demo you might have witnessed that the same that we did not create a route table it was automatically associated with that and the, this main route table actually controls the routing for all subnets that we create that are not explicitly associated with any other route table so as we might want to assign our subnets to a different route table that we might have customized for our requirements we can assign our subnets to custom route tables as well and make use of them else it will be by default assigned to the main route table and you can add remove modify routes in the main route table but you cannot create a more specific route than the local route that is pointing to the same vpc and you cannot delete the main route table but you can replace the main route table with a custom subnet route table that you have created and you cannot set a gateway route table as a main route table so these are a few points that you need to remember for the routing tables for the main route table i hope it was clear let's move so i think by now we have the idea of what a custom route table is but let's discuss a few points here as well so what aws tells us is that as a part of the best practice please don't change the main route table and leave it in its original default state and instead create your custom route tables and assign the subnets that you want to that by default the custom route table is empty and if you create a vpc with an internet gateway on the console the wizard actually creates a custom route table and adds a route to the internet gateway and you can add modify and remove routes in the custom route table that is the flexibility that we want and for better reliability you can delete a custom route table only if it has no associations so this we can actually experiment this in the demo as well so don't worry about that and another important type of route table is the gateway route table and gateway routing is a term used when a routing table is associated with a gateway as the name suggests it's referred to as a gateway route table in gateway routing we associate the routing table with an internet gateway or a virtual private gateway and this type of gateway is very important if you're planning to route the traffic to your instances from a security application or firewall application before it reaches your applications so here what happens is if there is a traffic that wants to reach your application then it has to pass through the eni or elastic network interface before it reaches your application instances so in this way you can secure your application further on these lines and there are several rules and constraints to using a gateway route table i want you guys to please read them in detail in the aws documentation as well and the important one that i wanted to share was that when you think of gateway route tables you must remember that you can only specify a local or a network interface as a target you cannot specify any other type of targets including individual host ip addresses i know some of these points are really confusing so let's check out a real time example here So this real time example tells us a story about a design which has a middle box application which can screen the incoming traffic before it reaches the application instances and middle box application can be a device or a software that acts like a firewall or nat or a traffic filter it is a concept that is widely used in modern application design and the basic idea for the design would be first you have your application hosted on ec2 instances which is being guarded by the application network interface or the eni and we have an internet gateway attached to the vpc which lets traffic come by 
Here, our firewall app actually inspects all the traffic that enters and leaves the VPC through the internet gateway. Now, let's understand how the routing table is configured to ensure that our design only lets traffic coming from the internet gateway to pass through the firewall application and the ENI before it reaches the application that is hosted on the EC2 instances. So, the route table 1 or the route table A. For the destination that is falling in the side block of 10.0.1.0 slash 24, the target is set to be the ID of the ENI or the Elastic Network Interface. And any other instance has to be iterated over the local same VPC. So as you can see here, the side block that actually wants to have access, so this side block subnet B, so any destination IP that falls under the side block for the subnet B has the target for ENI, which tells us that that is basically has to pass through the firewall app. The route B actually that you see here, if the traffic is being received the same way the instance has to access the internet. For this, the route table B tells us that all the IPs in the cider block 0.0.0.0/0, that is basically all the IPs in IPv4 that has to pass through the internet gateway. And the route table C that you see here, here as well, all the IPs in the cider block that we have, that is basically all the IPs in the IPv4 address list that has to pass through the ENI as we are trying to restrict control to the ENI and all instances are required to pass through the ENI itself. And if you try to understand the property here, we will get a clear understanding of how smartly we can control access within the subnet. We have the internet here. And if suppose there are requests coming in from the instances, they have to pass through the firewall app and then through the ENI to get access to the instances that we have. And the same goes when our application are willing to access the public internet, they have to pass through the ENI, then to the public internet that is with the internet gateway. So you can also design applications like this. So I hope you now are getting a very bleak understanding of how the internet gateway and the design actually works. So let's move on.